they, but then nobody knew exactly where they were. So then they called Shmuel's parents. They called Mayor's parents. They had they had they had relatives learning in yeshiva in Eretz Yisrael. They asked them to go to the Kosal and to Daven. And it, it was just it was so everybody was saying to Hillel, it was a a terrible terrible situation. Meanwhile, it's now about ten o'clock at night. The boys are freezing. They're they're hugging each other. They're freezing from the cold. They're shaking and they're shivering. And Shmuel says to Mayor, he says, Mayor, what's going to be with us? What's going to be with us? They had their fingers were they could hardly feel their fingers and they could hardly their ears were red around the ears and they they were feeling so so cold. And then and Shmuel, Mayor, what's going to be with us? And that's when Mayor said. My father always taught me a phrase, and that phrase is Yeshua's Hashem, Keheret Ayan. The salvation of Hashem can come in the blink of an eye. We're never alone. We just have to die. Let's die, Shmuel. Let's die. And they would die those two boys. They would die with their whole heart, with such sincerity. They were pleading with Hashem. Please, Hashem. It looked very bad. Nobody knew where they were. And they were freezing. And it was. It looked very bad. But they kept saying, Yeshua, Hashem, Keheref Ayin. That the, the, the salvation of Hashem can come in the blink of an eye. And they kept davening. They kept davening. Among the people who were looking for the boys was a helicopter. It was a police helicopter. The helicopter was flying over that area of the woods. There were two men in the helicopter. One's name was Frank, and one's name was Bob. Bob was driving the helicopter, and Frank was manning a underneath the helicopter. And he had, like, a video screen. And there was a magnifier, and all of the the, the uh, scene underneath the helicopter was was magnified, so it looked like Frank was about ten feet off the ground. Of course, he wasn't, but because of the magnification, he looked very, very close. As he was sweeping the searchlight all over the roads and the pathways, through the brush, through the woods of that entire area, trying to find the boy. As the boys were were saying Yeshua Hashem Keheref Ayin, Yeshua Yeshua Hashem Keheref Ayin, suddenly, in the distance, they heard the sound of a helicopter, and the helicopter was coming closer and closer. So Mayor started to laugh. He said, "Shmuel, Shmuel, don't you see? Hashem is sending a helicopter to save us." And it was getting closer to them, and closer to them. They could already see that the searchlight was sweeping across the tops of the tree, not not very far from them, and it was heading right in their direction. May was so excited. He said he ran to the pathway in between the trees. There was a pathway right in between the trees, and the searchlight was almost above his head. So he raised his arms. And he started to wave his arms upward. We're here. We're here, he said. And then he saw it. That the tops of the trees were so thick, it was like an umbrella, which went, went from one side of the pathway to the other side of the pathway. And Frank was right above Mayer's head. And Frank could not see him because Mayer was blocked by the umbrella of the tree branches. For some reason, Mayer, Frank rather, told Bob to stop the helicopter. He just wanted to be very, very careful. And he was sweeping the searchlight up and down, up and down. So Mayer saw that the, that the helicopter was stationary. It hadn't moved. So he took the opportunity to climb the tree. He decided to climb the tree to the very, very top and push 
back those branches and, and wave at the, at the helicopter. He was racing up the tree. Oh, boy. The branches were scratching at his legs, but he didn't care. He was racing. He was climbing like he never climbed before. And he climbed up that tree until finally he got to the highest branch that he could step on. And he saw that he wasn't high enough because Mayer wasn't tall enough. He was only in the seventh grade. And the tops of the branches rose about two feet above the farthest point that he could reach his arms. And that's when he started to daven. He said, Hashem, Hashem, Yeshua, Hashem, Keheref Ayin. Please, Hashem, please, Hashem. And then he had an idea. The red kerchief in his pocket. He looked around quickly and he saw a tree branch that was about three feet high. He snapped the branch off the rest of the trunk and then he pulled out the red handkerchief, unfolded it, and stuck it on the top of the stick. And he poked the stick through the branches and he was waving the stick around and around and around. But by that time, the helicopter had moved on. And Mayer kept swerving it. He kept swaying. He kept twirling the stick and he was crying. Hashem, Hashem, he said. Please bring it back. Please bring it back. Hashem, please bring it back. He was davening with the whole bottom of his heart. Meanwhile, in the helicopter, Bob was driving. Bob said, Frank, how does it look? Frank hesitated. Bob said, Frank, how's it look? Frank said, well, I, I guess it looks okay. Bob said, Frank, why are you hesitating? So Frank said, well, just the second before we moved off, I saw a tiny red dot at the lower left corner of the screen. And it's probably nothing, Bob, but let's, let's just continue. So Bob said, okay. And then a Sure, it's nothing, but I'll never forgive myself unless I'm absolutely positive. Would you mind, Bob? I'm sorry. Would you mind just going back? And Bob said, sure. And he turned around the helicopter. Meanwhile, Mayer was still sw twirling that stick around and around and around. And when the helicopter came back, he started to laugh. It was a nace. Thank you, Hashem. Thank you, Hashem, he was saying. Meanwhile, this time, Frank saw exactly what he needed to see. So he got on the loudspeaker of the, of the helicopter, and he said, I see you. I see you, he said. We're here. We're sending the highway patrol. He said, you can climb down. You can climb down. I see you. And then the red handkerchief disappeared under the branches, and Mayer climbed down. And he was of joy. Yeshua Hashem Keheref Ayin. The salvation of Hashem came in the blink of an eye. Ten minutes, the highway patrol was pulled up, and two ambulances pulled up. And then the it was it was still a little bit far away from the boys because the boys are pretty deep into the big highway patrolman got out. Meanwhile, the drivers of the ambulances stayed by the ambulances. The highway patrolman got out and they followed the directions, electronic directions, which told them pretty much where the boys were. And they were able to find the boys. A few minutes later, they found the boys. They were carrying blankets. One of them had equipment to to put, but to stabilize Schmuel's foot and so he he stabilized his foot and then these men these these two highway patrolmen they wrapped both boys buck and and they picked them up and they carried them they carried them to the ambulances they put them in the ambulances 
and he called immediately to the to the parents. Of course, when this happened, you know, as soon as Frank and they called, every everybody was so relieved. Everybody was crying, such tears of joy. And then the boys went to the hospital, and they and they were treated. They were treated for exposure to the very to the terrible. They stayed overnight for observation in the hospital. And then the next morning, the boys were released from the hospital, and there was a cast on Shmuel's foot. And uh, and Aunt Shoshana, Uncle Mordechai, of course, visited the boys. And then they, uh, they, uh, the parents came. In fact, they didn't put them on a bus to go back. The boys' parents came. And they came. Shmuel's parents came. And, and, and Mayor's parents came. And they took the boys home. Well, what a few days that was. They were. When they came back to school, they were celebrities. When they came back to school, not only were they well known at school, they were well known all around the country because it had been such a, it had been such a, uh, a news, a news item all around, all around the world, all around, you know, that what happened to this boy. A reporter, a reporter came to them. The principal said, he let them out of, of class, and he said, uh, you know, there's a reporter from the newspaper that he wants to interview him. So Shmuel and Mayer, they went to the principal's office, and there was a newspaper reporter there, there was a newspaper photographer there, and the boys uh, sat down, and they were taking pictures, and and it was a very, very nice man. The reporter was a very, very nice man. So he pulled up a chair, and he took out a pen and paper, and he started, wanted to start writing down, you know, all of the whole story, and how was it, boys? How did you feel? And then he asked them, he asked them, do you mind if I ask you a very, I guess it's a little bit of a person. They said, I don't mind. Shmuel, do you mind? Shmuel said, I don't mind. So the reporter said, before the helicopter came, and it it, it was it looked very. Uh, if you can really tell deep down inside, how did you feel? So Schmuel said, Mayor can answer that one. Go ahead. What? How did we feel? And that's when Mayor said, "I repeated phrase that my father thought, and that phrase is." Yeshua Hashem Keheref Ayin. Now, the newspaper reporter didn't know how to speak uh, Lashon HaKodesh. So he said, what? how do you spell that? Yeshua, I guess, to spell it Y-E-S-H-U-A-S, uh, Yeshua. So the newspaper reporter is writing it down. And then he said, well, I guess the text word is H-A-S-H-E-M. Hashem. And the newspaper report is writing it down. And then uh, Kehere, I guess you spell it K um, apostrophe H E R E S, Kehere. And the newspaper report is writing it down. And then I N A Y I N. So he said, That's an amazing phrase, the reporter said. What, what, what does it mean? And that's when Bayer said the word that went into this newspaper story, and the words were repeated around the country, picked up by all the major newspapers around the country. And this spray was picked up by all of the newspapers. And all and the translation, which Mayor said, salvation, Hashem, comes in the blink of an eye. He said, and that's what I felt, and that's what I that's what Shmuel and I were both thinking. And we were diving, we were praying as hard as we could. The newspaper reported said, that's amazing. He said, it's, it's, a, it's an inspiration to me. And then he, then he said, thank you, thank the boy. And then it went out. Now, what happened was that this made a tremendous, tremendous kiddush. All over the country. Countless, countless people. We're reading that story about these two boys and their phrase of Yeshua Hashem Geherefayim, that the salvation of a <coughs> in the blink of an eye. It was a story. It was a story in that school. They were talking about that. All of the boys, their friends, they went over the story so many times. They got so many letters. Letters from people all over the country flowed in. How people were saying that reading that story changed their 
lives and how they people felt closer to Hashem and they were they were praying with more sincerity based on this wonderful experience. So what we have to this is the end of the story, but we can take a message for ourselves. We are now in the day after Pesach. In Pesach, during Pesach, what did we see? We saw Yeshua Hashem. We saw that we saw that uh, Dam, Radea, Kinim, we saw all of the wondrous miracles. It was Yeshua Hashem. It was salvation of Hashem. And Hashem took us, He took us through the tunnels of the Yamsuf. We saw the pillar of cloud in the daytime. And we saw the pillar of fire in the nighttime. And we saw how Hashem took care of us. Uh, and there's no difference, everybody. There's no difference between today and there's no difference between today and then. Yeshua is Hashem. We have only to believe and to trust in Hashem's protection. As we say every night, we say before we go to sleep, Hinei lo yonum v'lo yishon shomer Yisrael. Behold, the shomer Yisrael, the guardian of Israel, he doesn't go to sleep. He's a shomer constantly over the Jewish people. He's a shomer over the Jewish people, and he's a shomer over each and every one of us personally. And that's what we have to feel to the deepest part of our neshamas, that Hashem is with us, and Hashem is taking care of us. And Yeshua Hashem, Keheref I. It's a very beautiful story. I, wow. I just I want to thank you. It's my pleasure. Well, a very beautiful and inspiring story, Rabbi Glatt. I didn't want to interrupt you. Usually I say some uh, comments, but uh, I felt I'll give this all to you and you did an inspiring job. And of course, boys and girls, for more stories from Rabbi Glatt, you can always go to uh, um, Torah Anytime. Any special place like we can. Just uh, punch it's in your name. Dot com right. and go to the speakers. It says there's, a, there's a, a, a place to click on speakers, and then you go down to my name, right. Rabbi Glatt, G-L-A-T-T. I always find it um, at the search button. I put in Glatt, but uh, I guess that's the easier way to find it, right? Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Very good. Thank you so much, uh, Rabbi Glatt, all the way from Florida. Your words were very, very inspiring. You sure as I'm clarifying. Thanks, everybody. Okay, and our minag okay. is always to to finish off the show with a, a beautiful song from uh, Baron Carolina that starts with the word Ka Echsoif Noyam Shabbos. It's a few minutes, and uh, then when we come back, it's before Sfir, no, before Rosh Chodesh. I thought I'm going to get where Rosh Chodesh is, no? What do you say? Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. There we have it. That's the...
There you have it, boys and girls. This is the show here right here at Jaywood Studios. Well, I'm at this time next week. We'll be back. Well, for now, good job is from Jaywood Radio. This is the Osvalai Bornstein right here with, um, to my left, Moishi Grun, uh, Grunfeld. Yep. This is the Osvalai Bornstein. See you next week. Official Shech to follow me, then Leil Shish with Yodi. Don't, Don't go, go away. away. Time for everyone. This is jrootradio.com. Mountain Fruit. For over 15 years, Mountain Fruit has been.